Bay, East and West Coasters. This is the Weekly Pulse with Ambrose, and I'm your host, Ambrose Angel. I'm always hugely excited to chat with you guys, but um, I am not alone. I've got my DJ, DJ Delta Dawn, on the ones and twos. She's ready to take your calls at any moment if you want to chat with me or if you have any comments or just whatever comes to mind if you want to chat with us. And just let us know. We've got the number here. The number is one three four seven two one five eight four two seven. Again, that is one three four seven two one five eight four two seven. Please feel free to use it anytime that you would like throughout the podcast. We are totally open to chatting with you guys. So that being said, um, as much as all of the shows prior to this one that I've done, this show holds a very special place in my heart because it's a story or a show about our true heroes of the world, the real people out there fighting for the freedoms and liberties that we all oftentimes take for granted. Whether you believe in the war that our countries are fighting or not, even if you, for whatever reason, you're totally against everything, our service men and women deserve and have more than earned our support of them. Not just our current active duty military members, but our prior military members, the resistance, the retirees, the whole nine yards. So, you know, um, if at any point you are familiar with anyone that has served in our, served in our military, someone that has fought for this great nation, you know, if you have anyone in your family that has done that, you know, kudos to you, truly. And it's such a huge, such a huge I want to say sacrifice, because in truth, when you join the military, you're, you're kind of sacrificing your own, your life, your, your pursuit of life, to kind of find something, find your niche. You know, a lot of people that join the military, they don't always join the military for what would be considered, quote, unquote, if you could see my hands, you would know that I'm doing the quotes, and I say that a lot, but I truly am. Um, but they don't necessarily join for the right reasons sometimes. Sometimes a lot of people join the military because it's, it's, it's what fits them at the moment. I don't know that there's, there's a great deal of people that do join the military and say that they do it because, you know, they had family members that did it. You know, I know my dad was a service member. He was in the Army. I didn't join the military because he joined the military. I actually didn't join the military at all. But, you know, since um, since... He's been in the military. I've worked on military bases. You know, everything that has been hugely uh, a part of my life with him being a service member has played a part, even though it was kind of unintentional, it has played a huge part in my life. So, you know, a lot of times when you have that military presence in your family, it kind of sways you that way. So, but our service men and women, the treatment of their families, our vets, after all the service and their tours of duty, you know, are fallen. All these people are and should be considered our true heroes of this great country, truly. So I want to start off by reading the oath, the oath that they take when uh, they join the military. Because, you know, it has to be one of the hugest moments or milestones in their life, you know. Let's, let's go ahead and, and let me tell you about this here. It says, people, it is I, your name here. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will hear or that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations and the uniform codes of military justice. So help me God. Amazing, right? This is probably one of the most powerful things a person fresh out of high school can decide to do. Protect and serve our country. It's not about that anymore. They've pledged themselves to our country. And at the same time, maybe in a situation where they have to put their lives on the line for all of you and myself. That is an admirable choice that not everyone is prepared to make. I know I was not prepared to make that choice. And I was faced with it. You know, when I graduated from high school, I was one of those people that didn't know what I wanted to hear. I had no idea what or where I wanted to go. All I knew is that I'm 17, 17 at the time, and I need to do something. I have to get out of my parents' house. I have to move on. 
I was not strong enough to make that choice to sign my name and sign my quote unquote life away for four years. It just wasn't happening. But there are people that decided to do it. And now, after all this time, I look at them, you know, we have this great thing called Facebook where you get to see people that you went to school with and everything. And, you know, I see them now and I'm like, oh my God, you look fantastic. You know, the military life has been great to you as far as I can tell, you know. And, it's so amazing to see these people, whether you knew them in school and they were people that you got along with or you didn't, you see how much things have changed, seeing them grow in the military, watching them conform to what you believe they're supposed to be. You know, it's really amazing to see how much joining the military or being a part of something so huge so amazing can change a person. I knew so many people that I I don't ever hate or anyone, but people that you just like, you know, you're in high school, kids are cruel when they're in high school and middle school and things like that. So, you know, when you when you see people that are those people that are either quote unquote bullies and we're gonna talk about that next week, just so you know, bullies next week. But um but, you know, they're bullies, they're, they're mean, they're awful, you know, and now 10 years later, you look at them and you're like, oh, my gosh, wow, you've grown, you've matured, you're, you're that person that I was either terrified of or never got along with or whatever. You were that person, and now you're not. You know, now the military has changed that. You've become a respectable, you've become a self-sacrificing kind of person, and that's what does, truly, you know. As much as I would love to say that everything and everybody that everybody that's listening under the sound of my voice is going to understand what I'm saying, I know that a lot of people probably won't because being involved in the wars, being involved in all this political garbage, the nonsense that is coming along with uh, being um, American, you're kind of a lot of us are losing sight of what is really important. And regardless of what we think of our president, regardless of what we think of our Senate, of our Congress, those people are not necessarily the important people. It's these people. It is our servicemen and women and their families. That is what's important. That is who we should be fighting for, us, the Americans, and our servicemen and women are who are important. Every time I see a political commercial, it pisses me off to the highest level of festivity. Only because you never see these political parties, you never see these political people until it's time for you to elect one of them. But you see your servicemen and women. You see them, whether you see them checking the plane to their next stop or moving out of the country or going over to some war so that they can put their lives on the line for us. You see them. Those are the people that you interact with. Those are the people that are making it safe for you to sleep at night. You know, so those are the people that we're focusing on. Those are the people that this show is about today because they are, they are what keeps us safe. So that being said, um, yeah, so, uh, so like I said, this is probably one of the most important and powerful things that a person from Senate High School can decide to do, protect and serve our country. It's not about them anymore. They made this pledge to our country, and at some point in the situation, again, they can put their lives on the line for you and me, and that's an amazing choice. Also, let's think about the families. You know, how often do we hear about military families, husbands, wives, fathers, daughters, that leave their kids behind? They leave their kids behind because they're off, they're off in Iraq or they're off in Afghanistan. They're off in Djibouti. I like that one because it's funny. Um, but they're in Australia, you know, all these places that our military have to travel to. And what do they do? They miss pertinent parts of their children's lives. You know, they, they, miss, they miss graduations. They miss problems. They miss first steps and first words. They miss so much. And the least that we could do as civilians, as, as people of this great nation, is to show the credit and give credit where credit is due when it comes to our military service members. Hugely. Hugely. So once that oath is taken and that pledge is made, at that point, that person should be considered a hero to our country until their actions prove otherwise. Now, that is important to me, and I felt the need to say that 
if for no other reason, I want everyone to understand that I'm not naive. I don't think any of us are. Everyone that joins the service is not a good person. That being said, neither are, are all of our political parties, all of our police officers, all of our judges. Everyone that is supposed to be a protector is not a protector. And now the only reason that I feel comfortable saying this is because I know that you all, under the sound of my voice, have probably heard of everything that is going on in our military right now, everything that's going on in our country. There's been a lot of um, negativity pointed at the military, and that's one of the big reasons that I wanted to do this show because, again, as much negativity as there is, as we've heard about, there is a great deal of positivity that is overlooked. Because why? Because in the media, as we all know, as we all know that I somewhat loathe the media. <laughs> in the media, negativity sells so much better than positivity, and that's one of the big reasons that just about everything we see is negative. I find it very difficult to believe that everything that is played out in the media has to be negative. There is never really truly anything positive, and that to me is very frustrating because that feeds the negativity to bring more negativity, and that just makes it worse. So that being said, I truly understand that there's a lot of negativity that goes on in the military. I am a part of the military to some degree, but we'll just leave that to us. And, uh, you know, so I know that the rapes, the assaults, all the issues that happen, they happen in the military as well. But one of the huge reasons that those things are brought, again, for us is because that's the, the negative feeds, the negative, and that's what the media wants to see. They want more viewers. It's all about viewership. It's not actually about what they should be doing, and that is promoting our military so that more of our young people will want to be a part of something that is so huge, so strong, and it feeds the positivity of our country. Having the young people that are graduating from high school, that are looking for their niche, because right now, truly, our country is in turmoil. You know, this growing genre, this growing generation, they're lost and they need help. And I really, truly feel like one of the biggest things that they could do, one of the hardest things that they could do is make a choice to do something that will make them better in the long run, and that is joining our service, joining the military. So, active duty statistics. Now, I didn't know this, so I thought it would be really, uh, really important for you guys to hear it as well as kind of, you know, gauge a response about everything that you might know or might have known about the military. So um, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and the Coast Guard are each the different areas in which people would join to uh, be a military service member. The highest enlistment rate is actually for the Army. Army is where most people decide to join. Um, like I said, my dad was an Army member, so that was amazing to, to read or to see the uh, 450,000 people are listed in the Army. Uh, the Navy is uh, second. It's not a close second at all, really, <laughs> but it is second. That's uh, 275,000 people. The Air Force is uh, the third with 258,000 and uh, the Marines 178,000 and truly you know um, of all the branches I used to actually work on a uh, Marine Corps base so it doesn't surprise me that that is one of the lower the Coast Guard is actually the lowest the lowest of only 33,000 people but um but it's huge to me that the Marine Corps is such a such a you know second to the last only because I know that to be a Marine, I've seen their boot camp. I don't know that very many people can do it. So while all the services are amazing, I, I'm more partial, of course, to the Marines because I've been around them. I have amazing friends that are prior military that are Marines, and um, it was definitely different to watch them, to watch the drill instructors, to watch the people when they come in, when they first start, when they first 
get their stuff together and, and start doing their boot camp and, you know, seeing them throughout their training and when they finally graduate, you know, it's like it is probably one of the most heartwarming things to see them come across um, and come into the PX after they've already done their walk and it's, it's amazing. It truly is. So um, in total, there are over 1,196,000 service numbers. And these statistics, I think, are probably just a little bit old. This might be actually for about 2012, maybe 2011, something like that. But it's just numbers to give you an idea of what a huge amount of people get out and put their lives on the line for us. Huge. Huge. So, um, like I said, these are not as current as I'd like. But um, I'm using these stats just so that you know that we have a great deal of active duty servicemen and women that are fighting for our country. Huge. Huge. So if at any point you actually see a service member or you know a service member, try your hardest to make sure that you show them the, the respect that they deserve. You don't know what that person is going through. You don't know what the enlistment is doing to them. You don't know how often they have to be away from their families. You don't know what, what's next for them. It is truly, truly difficult to, to grasp where they're, where they're going, where they're, where they're at in their careers, what they've had to endure. There's so much. And, you know, to just to not know that already have a preconceived notion about what they're doing in the military, you know, that couldn't be more wrong. So we're going to move on now to, um, to the homeless veterans. And I think that I wanted to talk about this because it's such an epidemic. It's so huge in this country that veterans are homeless, that there are people that have served and fought for this country, and they don't even have a place to stay. That is unacceptable, hugely unacceptable. Again, I don't care – what you feel about what this country is doing as a, as a power. I don't care if you're upset or angry about wars. I don't care if you are happy, go lucky, oh, my God, I'm so happy that we're fighting these wars. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you support the people that have fought for this country. That is a huge part of why I'm doing and saying what I'm doing and saying. So the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, for anybody that uh, is not familiar with the whole name, <laughs> the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA, states that the nation's homeless veterans are predominantly male, with roughly 8% being female. The majority are single, live in urban areas, and suffer, suffer from mental illness, alcohol and or substance abuse, or co-occurring disorders. About 13% of the adult homeless population are veterans. 13% is too much for anyone, truly. But it definitely is too much for us to say that we're not doing anything about it. Now, here or in the Seattle area, you know, you see people on the side of the road. You see people that are sleeping in uh, little booths on the water, um, you see people that are sleeping under a bridge, you see these people, and when we are walking in that area, one of the big things that they say is, you know, I'm, I was in the military, when I got out, I had a difficult time, I started drinking, all these things. If you know someone like that, give them a referral. Give them a referral to a place that can help them. I actually took down a couple of um, a couple of places that you can call that do their best to help people. There is the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, www.va.gov. Also, Veterans Administration Aid and Special Pension, www.veteranaid.org. And uh, the National Military Services for Veterans of Foreign War, www.dfw.org. And the VFWs, there are several VFWs in many different areas. I know that there's a couple of them here in uh, the Seattle area. There's also quite a few down where I'm originally from in South Carolina. So there's no way that you can tell me that there's not one way to help these people 
we need to be able to help with jobs. You know, there's so many military members, most of which of my friends that are military are unable to find jobs. If you can help by helping someone with a resume, if you can help by putting in a good word for someone that is as part of the military that's been having difficulty finding work, anything that can be done to help those people should be done because that's how important they are. That is what they have sacrificed for this country, whether it's, whether they were in for four years or eight years, 12 years, or 30 years. It is deserved. It is earned. Our love, our appreciation, and our assistance has been earned. That being said, this probably is the most painful part of it because I also wanted to discuss the fallen. Now, I thought of myself that this was not going to be a negative show, but I guess that every time I think about it, when I talk about the way that veterans are treated, it kind of is a little bit negative, considering that this country does not pay as much attention to our military members, our active duty, our prior military, our retirees, our service, the whole nine yards, as they should. I mean, truly. It is what it is. I, I, I'm going to read these names, and it's going to hurt, truly, but um, you need to be hurt. So um, these are some of the fallen in uh, Army Staff Sergeant Thomas A. Bayshore, Jr., was 31 of Milton, Philadelphia. Navy Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jonathan F. Gibson, was 32 of Aurora, Oregon. Navy Lieutenant Commander Landon J. Jones was 35 of Lampoa, California. Army Staff Sergeant Timothy R. McGill was 30 of Ramsey, New Jersey. Army Staff Sergeant Liam J. Nevins was 32 of Denver, Colorado. Army Specialist Joshua J. Strickland was 23 of Woodstock, Georgia. Army Specialist James T. Wickless, Chasen, of Edmond, Oklahoma, he was 22. Army Staff Sergeant William D. Brown III was 44 of Franklin, North Carolina. Army Staff Sergeant Randall R. Lane was 43 of Indianapolis, Indiana. Army Staff Sergeant Robert E. Thomas, Jr., was 24 of Montana, California. Air Force Staff Sergeant Todd J. Labracio, Jr. was 22 of New Fairfield, Connecticut. So I just want you to kind of take that in and understand that those 11 names were names of people that were ages 22 to 44 that fought our country and paid the ultimate sacrifice. They died for our country. They died for you. They died for me. And should forever be considered the real heroes of this country. And there are more, thousands more just like them. The names that I just read to you are those of the true heroes of our country. They weren't actors, musicians, pro athletes, or political figures. You know, the people that are glamorized every day in the media and social media outlets. These are the names of the people that made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. People of all ages, races, and backgrounds. People that deserve to be remembered and held in the highest regard. And uh, again, I'd like to leave you with a few. Places that assist, uh, assist veterans, assist people that have um, gotten out of the military um, or are more active duty military. They assist in, in every aspect. And that's the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs at www.va.gov. The Veterans Administration Aid and Special Pension, www.veteranaid.org. And National Military Services, Veterans of Foreign War www.dfw.org. 
These are just a couple of things that you can Google. I got them. That's pretty much how I found them on Google. So you can Google just about anything and, and get um, a response. If you want to assist in any way with anything regarding uh, taking care of our military, it is not hard to find. Trust me. We've got about five minutes left before the show ends, and I just want to say thank you so much to um, everyone under the sound of my voice. Um, it's been my time. I appreciate all of you for taking the time to listen. And next week I will be discussing bullying and when parents should be held accountable. Um, we'll also be discussing suicide in conjunction with bullying. So um, I think that's going to be a huge topic only because there's so much that's going on in the media right now regarding bullying, regarding um, parents being held accountable. But also, you know, I think it's going to touch probably a few chords when I say how I feel about them. Um, and also, I normally do this in the beginning of the show, but let me go ahead and also say that anything that I say regarding my show or regarding my feelings are mine and mine alone. I do not represent anyone um, other than myself. I do not speak for anyone other than myself. So um, I'd appreciate it if you guys keep that in mind when I'm giving my little opinion. I'm putting my hands together and just kind of making it so that you know that I ramble a bit. But um, just so you know, if you care to listen, fantastic. If you don't, I totally understand because I do not have a PhD or anything else. I just kind of bring myself to the table and hope that you guys are interested in hearing them. So that being said, next week, bullying and um, the accountability of parents and things of that nature. So I really thought also about doing a gun control show only because I know that it's a, it plays a big part in um, the country as well. And there is some um, opposition on each side. So um, that's a show that I can't do alone, though. So I, I like the idea of doing it. I just don't necessarily like the idea of attempting to do it on my own. So um, if I can maybe find a partner to discuss that show or discuss that topic with, I think I might actually do one, but um, next week I've already planned for the bullying and um, what I want to discuss with that. So that being said, we've got about uh, two minutes left, and I just want to say thank you again. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. I also hope that you take the time to go back, if you'd like, and listen to a couple of other shows. If you're a new listener, um, we've done shows on domestic violence. We've also done shows on, uh, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It was Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Domestic Violence um, Awareness Month. And I think there was one other show before that, and in truth, I don't remember what it was, but I'm sure it was fantastic because I'm, I'm pretty awesome most of the time. <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much. I hope you've enjoyed the show. This is Dana Dosha Angel. Please make sure you join me again next week. I plan on being here, same that time, same that channel. And I also plan, again, to uh, figure out whether or not I'm going to have a co-host for a gun control show. So if you want to email me, it is uh, ambrosiaangel at yahoo.com. Let me know if you want to discuss gun control. It's not really that big of a deal if you don't because I'm probably going to do it anyway. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Have a great, great um, Thursday, because it's not the weekend, so I can't wish you a great one until tomorrow. But, um, so, the future, have a great weekend, take care, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Weekly Pulse with Ambrose on the Air Nation Radio Network. <laughs>